guests onto the show is that I get exposed to information, topics, ways of life, perspectives, and all of that that I would never have come across otherwise. And I think we potentially have one of the best examples of that in a very long time with an author joining us now to talk about a topic that I have really never thought about in any sort of critical or even relatively deep way. So let's broach that today as we're joined by the author of Here She Is, The Complicated Reign of the Beauty Pageant in America, sociologist from Brown University, Hillary Levy Free. Friedman, welcome to the Damage Report. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, glad to have you on. So, so this is about pageants, but it's really a lens that you're using to look at feminism in America over the past century or so. Even more than that, I really started in 1848 at Seneca Falls. A lot of people don't know P.T. Barnum started the first beauty contest in the United States in the 1840s and kid beauty contest too. So it goes starts there and goes all the way up to present day. That is fascinating. So I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. So P.T. Barnum is all up in that. I had no idea that, I mean, why not? He's done literally everything else. So um, so let's talk about the, the evolution over the time. You have a long time frame here that you're talking about. Um, where does where do sort of modern or even relatively modern ideas of feminism start to creep into it? It seems like initially that wasn't necessarily one of the driving forces behind setting these up. Well, the book is organized around what I refer to as the three waves of feminism. So sort of the, the biggest success of the first wave of feminism was the ratification of the 19th Amendment, celebrating the 100th anniversary this year. And about a year later, the Miss America pageant starts. And if you've ever wondered why pageant contestants wear sashes, they got those from the suffragists. So that's a whole interesting story. So right there, we see a very strong connection. And then one of the biggest events in second wave feminism was in September. 1968, when the New York radical women organized a ZAP protest right outside of the Miss America pageant. And it's seen as one of the first really organized and public moments of second wave feminism. And then there's lots of ties to what I call third wave feminism after the election of Trump, who of course used to own Miss Universe and Miss USA, but in the Me Too movement and links to Gretchen Carlson as well. So it, you know, beauty pageants really are a lens to see this arc of feminist history in America. Wow, yeah, and if people want more information about one of, I think the most interesting links is, is what you said about the sash. I know that you have an op-ed available on the New York Times about that. So um, yeah, I wasn't sure how long I'd go before I'd mentioned Donald Trump, but obviously before he was you know, the occupant of the White House, um, he had this long history with pageants. Um, how does he play into this sort of the interlinking of the pageant world with feminism? Well, for sure. What Donald Trump did when he was owner, which he has admitted to, and then many of the contestants have talked about, really fulfills some of the worst stereotypes about beauty pageants. So here's a man who owns the pageant, and he would go backstage and sort of, in his own words, he would inspect the goods. And even some of the former beauty queens who are very supportive of him, like Carrie Prejean, who was Miss California USA, you may recall, because there was a big brouhaha that she said she didn't believe in same sex marriage, and she was named first runner up. So anyway, even she said he came one day and he divided the contestants between hot and not, and she was like, I, she, this is in her memoir. I was, she said she was glad to be in the hot group, but she felt sorry for the people who were in the not. So really, Donald Trump fulfills those stereotypes. Miss USA and Miss Universe has a very specific history that it is explicitly a beauty pageant. Always has that swimsuit component because of how it started, and so Donald Trump is actually a really bad example and somewhat a rare example because. The pageant world tends to be dominated by women and not by men. So, is that you know behind the scenes as well as on the stage in terms of organizing it, promoting it, profiting from it for all of that? That is more um, leaning towards women. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people will say this is beauty pageants are terrible because women are being judged by men and evaluated based on how they look, and there's lots and lots of truth in that. But one of the things I do, and here she is, is I take these sort of stereotypes and these claims very seriously. And I collected a lot of data. So I collected all the program books from the 1970s to the present for Miss USA, Miss America, and some others as well. And looked at the makeup of the judges panel. So actually a majority, a vast majority of judges are women and not men. Now, of course, hmm. at home, there may be men judging the women on how they look on their TV screens. But even there, starting as early as the 1950s and 60s when these pageants went on TV, the majority of the viewing audience has been women. 
Uh, thank you so much for joining us. The book is Here She Is, The Complicated Reign of the Beauty Pageant in America. Uh, Hillary Levy Friedman, thank you so much for joining us. Very fascinating work you've, uh, you've put together there. Thanks for having me. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.